much air time. <laughs> I was saying, I wait, was, yeah, let's move next topic. <laughs> next <laughs> topic. Too much, too much air time, but it's weird ass. So, <laughs> good, good. Yep, that's my child. He should have had too. <laughs> next topic. Primary reason, because <laughs> we want to stop, we want to end this episode on a, on a positive note. Um, primary reasons for wanting to get married today benefits um reasons for wanting to be married in the past which is stuff we kind of segued into before but what are some reasons people want to be married and what are some reasons people wanted to be married some of the stuff we hadn't already discussed already when you want to be around somebody who likes you every day for the i mean at least when it first starts you know what i'm saying that's not enough for me to marry them, though. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? I mean, say somebody that somebody that you love that you into and be around all day and got your back and loyal and, and you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a, that's such a loaded question. How could that you really even like answer? No, nah, I mean, but in, in a sense, it does too. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, Ralph, can you say that again? It's so just a really, it's we, a really loaded question. Yeah. So we touched on. We touched on this, but to elaborate more on benefits of marriage, um, why somebody would want to be married, why they want to be married today, why they want to, how, how they benefited back in the day, um, what are some of the, we want to end on a high note, what are some of the positive aspects of marriage? The positive so honestly, aspects? I, I look at the positives of marriage being that I always, I'll, as long as this marriage lasts and, and hear me out when I say that, meaning that I always have this person that I can confide in. I always have this person that I could spend my day and energy with, like meaning like, you know, when I have a bad day at work, the first person I want to call is John. When I'm having a good day or something happens, the first person I want to call is him. And I'll, I feel like in in my heart of hearts, even, you know, after, if anything goes left and like after all that subsides, I still feel that I can still call him and confide in him as a friend. So I always see a relationship, whether it's friendship or, you know, companion, like, and when I say companion, I mean like my, my love. So like, I, for me, that's my benefit because if you don't have that one person, like we all have that one person that we go to now, but to have it in the person that you love, always knowing, it, knowing that whether it's a bad day, they know what to say to make you feel better, whether it's just, you know, oh, babe, man, fuck that bitch. Let's get her. Not nah, really like, but it makes you feel good to know that they got your back because it's like, yeah, but you really ain't going to do nothing, but you know, but it feels good to know that that person has your back. <laughs> For me, that's because we've had some, me and have had some conversations like that before, boy. And it feels good to have that person. Yeah. Person. Yeah, that emotional support system, um, somebody to build a legacy with, you can start your own family with, that you can grow with, um, partnership, um, that ride or die, like you said, like if somebody's bothering you, no, you're bothering us. Like, <laughs> you know, right. somebody that's there, but not, <laughs> not just there for temporarily or seasonally. They're there for the long haul. They're there till death. And, you know, even at your worst, they're still there to support you, protect you. You're sick. You know, they got the crackers. They, they're they laying in bed with you when you got coronavirus. I don't know. I'm just talking I mean, that's a that, that's a that's a crazy question because like my set my, my dude be Mike up there. I mean, shoot, he was married and now he ain't married no more. I'm still married. Like everybody might have their own perspectives. Like, what does it mean to be married? I mean, who knows, man? But what we're asking more so what the benefits are for for you. The benefit. Yeah. I don't. That, that's tough. I, I can't because I don't look at it a marriage like that. You're telling me to put it like, what do what do I, do I feel like a benefit? Like it, I got extra attributes because I'm married or something like that. Doesn't 
It doesn't but work in my mind that way. But okay. you do. Oh, you so, already answered it though. You said having somebody to lay beside you every morning. I mean, that's just cool. You can do that I, without being married. Yeah, I could do but that without Brandon, being married. Brandon, we're not talking about that on this tough topic today we're talking about but you can't do that without being married he's not lying but to be married i mean you i can't explain to you what makes you we're not talking about dating we had that episode we're talking about marriage <laughs> i mean marriage marriage is a personal preference bro. it's like what your favorite side meal is i might like macaroni and cheese you might like potato salad you know what i'm saying it's just what you like on your plate I don't know. I can't really tell no, you. No, we asking you what you like <laughs> on the, your plate. What do you like on your plate from your marriage? What do I like on my plate from my marriage? Yeah. I mean, I like my wife. I like my, I like my kid. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of things I like. I can't even. Y'all don't have enough time. We done wasted enough time talking about Algas Alcina's punk ass. We could have spent some more of that. I could have had some more words on it. <laughs> at least in, like at least in marriage or the marriages that you've seen that go well what benefits have you seen have you seen any you know no like, some of y'all yeah, have been on a divorce episode I'm <laughs> sorry no. you know, my no. whole thing is, is that hey. like I mean it goes back to what I was saying before like I mean whatever it is that you like Oh, you're asking about benefits, so let's just look at it that way. Um, a lot of people will get married for like benefit of financial stability. A lot of people can get married for you know just have like just emotional support. I mean, like I'm I have to think about it as a general thing because I'm somebody who doesn't want marriage for myself. Yeah. Um, so it's like you know for the LGBT community for a really long time, the whole reason why they wanted to get married was for medical situations like for somebody to be able to be in that room with them or to sign off on things in some cases they couldn't have that person because family disowned them so getting married gave them that opportunity that was a benefit for them so there's that in that regard um but like i mean i guess there you can say that there are plenty of benefits to it i mean like um <laughs> Uh, for anybody who's interested, um, if you're in, if you're looking into getting an individual retirement account, you can prolong your individual retirement account by being married. Other than that, I'm not really sure. Like, because anything and everything that everybody's already talked about, you can do without having to be married. So it's like, we know that. Yeah. Well, I don't know why y'all keep mentioning that. Here's the reason why. I'm Here's the reason why. I'm this is a real. You have yet to tell me. So, you have yet get to married. tell me something that is impossible to do unless you're married. That's not the conversation. Wow. Jointly. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but unless you pay child Ooh. support, if you pay child support, then you can't be found so, jointly. <laughs> because you if you found jointly, are all financial. <laughs> it is. But, I mean, like, the like, So, oh, so let's get to the nitty gritty of the conversation. You cannot be on the house together if you are not married. One person can be not, by the house and the other person is on the deed. No, you cannot be yes, on the house together. Yes, you can do together. both. I just, I do this. Yes, you, you can do both. Okay. So let's, let's just, get to the nitty gritty. The one you want to the deed. Like, if the conversation is fried chicken, life. we shouldn't be talking about pork chops. You lied. <laughs> but hold on, though. Let's get to the nitty gritty. Alicia, are you going to get married? Damn right I am. Sherelle, are you going to get married? I'd like to. B. Mike, are you ever going to get married again? I think I'm going to have one of those life partners that uh, <laughs> Alicia's talking about. I don't uh, know. You know what? Here I'm gonna say, I, can tell uh, that this, I can tell you right now, I don't know what I'm going to do because I've said I would or wouldn't do certain things and like my whole perspective changes. So that may happen. Right now, I'm looking for making sure I keep someone in my life that is a positive growth person for me. That's what mm -hmm. I'm looking for. Well, if we get married, cool. If we just stay, you know, together for forever, cool. I think you might have brought up a know. point, though. I think you might have brought up a point that might have been an underlying factor that's pretty much, if everybody thinks about it, that's pretty much why you get married. If you really find somebody who's really, really there for you and you really, really care for, why don't you just get married to them? 
and build a legacy with them, which Sherelle mentioned. We've all mentioned in our little ways. You don't have to. You don't have to. But if you would, you been with this person for X amount of time, and you look at this person like, look, man, I'm not going nowhere. To, you're not going nowhere. I want you to build, have my last name, and you know what I'm saying, and then build that legacy with them. That's why people ultimately get married because when they meet somebody who they really, really into and really, really love, that is pretty much why you get married. Yeah, and you know what, though? I think it's different between having little paperwork with the state and having the commitment ceremony of a wedding, which you can do without having the paperwork done. I don't, um, and the party. The... I don't need the license. See? <laughs> right. Exactly, because you know what? That, that license messes things up for you Wait, later on if you decide to not Wait, at least I didn't hear what you said. Can you repeat that? Um, well, we were kind of going round robin on whether or not we were going to get married or whatever. I, I don't want to get married. That's that's for real. But th I'm not saying that I don't want to party. I want to party. I want to get dressed up. I want to see all my friends dressed up. I want us to all get drunk and have ourselves a good time. So do you want the wedding, and the commitment ceremony? Say, oh, so yeah. you want to prom? I'll mean, be down for that. We don't got to have it be put down in writing. and There's right. going to have to be a license for all of that. But, I mean, yeah, I'll yeah. be down for the party. Yeah. Oh, you you would, would, it would be like wanna, a party, like um. No, it'd be like it'd be like she's no, a prom queen. You can go through. She's the you she's can the go prom through the queen entire already. Process. You can go through the entire process of having a wedding without having a marriage license. And you can and, and that's, and and that's what, without having a party. So. And and that's what you right. would be more willing. That's what you're saying. You that's what you would be more privy to doing like if, if okay, okay. Would, like if you if you could keep the state out of it you would you would go forward well you could just be like my friend where she got her marriage license done but she just never mailed it back in so they weren't technically married no that's, that's too close uh-uh we're not doing that but can i ask a question is, does the marriage license and i don't know this i'm ignorant to the fact because it ain't like i did i'm married in the commonwealth and i'm still not familiar with all their laws does the merit license just guarantee that your stuff goes to the spouse who you love? Because yes. there has to be a, there has to be a reason why that is in place. Because, like, say me and my life partner started a billion dollar business, all what somebody illegitimate for my family, who just because they'd be like, I'm my family and you're down the line because y'all didn't get married. If you would have got married, you would have been. Able you to keep still it. have to go file paperwork Hi. that this is your domestic partner. Yes, I, I have. I have the answer for you. Um, okay, I wasn't so, sure about that. So, in in regards to like your assets, like, and it it only comes into play really for a lot of people after you die. Um, and the reason for that is because like a marriage license and a divorce decree can play a big part in who gets money as far as like spouse or the new wife of spouse and whether or not you have like the proper beneficiaries up to date and things like that. Um, because like, say you are married and you put your first wife as your primary beneficiary and then you get divorced, but you forget to update your information once you get married to your new wife. Then they have to determine like when you got ma uh, married, when you got divorced in the time of which you passed in order to determine whether or not your funds go to the old wife or the new wife. So that, in that regards, yeah, those I'm that take work to say a lot. My knowledge of it in the Commonwealth state of Pennsylvania is me and John, when I was pregnant with Audrey, I could not get on his benefits. He has a state job. I could not get on his benefits whatsoever. If only if we went down and filed paperwork to become a domestic partnership, and we still had to file paperwork as if we were getting married. Like it's the same type of paperwork. It's just showing well, that you're a domestic partner and not married. But that is only to get his benefits through his job. I went. I just went through this. One of the reasons why we were going to get married a few years ago, but I was able to work some things out because I didn't want to get married just on the fact that I needed his benefits for me because I'm not working a full-time job right now because I'm in school. So I worked some things out. I was able to get everything that I needed through the state. But before, even though I was working part-time, I was still making too much to, to get anything through the state. So I was paying for my insurance through, you know, the Obamacare thing and I was still paying a whole bunch but 
that's neither here nor there. But what I'm saying is, is that like, there's still paperwork that has to be done for anything. Like when I go into the hospital with him, even now, they ask me, who am I? And I say, I'm his girlfriend. And they're like, uh, uh, they kind of look at me crazy. Uh, So it's like, okay, well, I can't be back here with him because we're girlfriend and boyfriend. See, here's the whole thing is though, it's a lot easier to get out of a domestic partnership than it is like getting out of a marriage. So it's about the the exit. You have to understand that you're in Pennsylvania. We are a Commonwealth state. So yes, it does take a lot longer to get out because they, you know, they they never separated that church and state thing. And they're more of a conservative state. So they believe in marriage. They they don't Uh believe in divorce. So it is harder because you know, right. I'm going through the same thing. So it's like one of those things where it's like, okay, well. Because, all right, so according to you, it's the same paperwork to get in, but it's not the same paperwork to get out. So you're right. You're I, so I, why not you're right. And ask, still, ask for what's going on with that. If you become power of attorney, you can go and say, you know, I'm power of attorney. I make medical decisions for them. They don't got to know about being a girlfriend, wife, whatever. It, but who would want to sign over their right of power of attorney? Say I'm in. You're not you know, signing some type over of anything. State. You're not signing over anything. The only thing that you're doing is saying that you can speak on behalf of that person. But, but that's not over that's what, anything. But that's what I'm saying. So just like you said, if you don't get the paperwork changed after y'all break up or move y'all separate ways or don't like or whatever, that person still has the power to make medical decisions over you. So your family don't. So what I'm saying is, is if something happens to you within that time frame and you didn't switch that paperwork over, they're yeah. the ones making decisions for you. And you may not that be happens together, if you're married together, together in a while. Either. There's also a just no. Just, you should be separated for that long to that point this and still not be communicating. For everyone, I'm not. I know, I, I know what you're saying, but I'm that. also, you know, I playing a little devil, devil's advocate because it's like, you know, um, in my one social work class, we were talking about that and how like these older people that have been married and their spouses have passed, and now their power of attorney is their child, but their child put them in this this um, nursing home and you know, they need medical decision, but their child has been living in Colorado for the last five years and really haven't been checking up on their parent and they're making decisions for them now. So it's like, just as I just want, just so that this is like, this is just general information. Um, There are two types of power of attorney. There is the power of attorney that says that while you are capable of handling all of your business and you're lucid enough to take care of everything, this right. other person also has the ability to do so. There's also another uh, type of power of attorney that says only up until the point that you can of no not do anything with the right, I mean, you yeah. can't move anymore, talking or whatever, that's when they become power of attorney. Right. Once you die, power of attorney is null and void. And then right. paperwork has to be Then you need an executor of your state. Correct. So a different thing. Right. Right. So. So yeah, I guess I mean, there's so many levels to this. We're, we're not even right. talking about marriage in the same type of like of just like being in love with each other. We're really right. just breaking out the oh, business aspect of we're it. We're talking about the legal part, the partnership. Yeah, bad. just the whole the business aspect of it. The part nobody wants. That part. But see, here, that, I mean, but the thing is. If me and Corinne got divorced tomorrow, we're just signing the papers. I mean, what the fuck are we really splitting? It but only really it, gets that difficult when you talking about uh, that major money. No, it's not. I'm, you're talking about things like 401 I mean, even spousal support or child support could be figured out. But no, 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 no. It's even your 401k. So if she has a 401k in the state uh, of Pennsylvania, but, uh, that's split down the middle. You get half regardless if you want it or not. Like, you could sign over if you don't want it. But 401k, if she has it and you don't, or you have it and she doesn't. Yeah, but, but I mean, but yeah, I mean, those are the laws. You know what you sign into those. But that shouldn't be a discouragement. You don't know, not, though. <laughs> you don't uh, know that, if you get divorced. Right. It's I not mean, a discouragement first of all, to have a committed if, relationship. If, if, if you know, when you sign your, I went to the, I went to the down the downtown office in downtown Pittsburgh inside, but it says Commonwealth. I'm already thinking like, oh, 
This ain't say uh, men's wealth or women's wealth. This says common's wealth. So that means anything I get is getting split in half. You know what I mean? But I could go by Ohio laws too, but that just be a whole buzzy. But the thing is, that also depends on who you married it. I mean, some of that that had changed too, because you know, if you're dealing with somebody, y'all could divorce easy. It doesn't have to always be messy. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes a per, sometimes a person to try to divorce it divorce a person just because they feel like that's the come up. Yeah, but like there's so, things like within a divorce, like you know, that go um, you know, everything that you collaborated as when you were married is what I'm saying. So, yeah, but when you get the house split, and I know people are going through that, you know what I mean? Right. But some of that, I mean, even the, the things that you think some people are fighting for is completely different than what you were they're really fighting for. So, you know, my question to you, because this was one of the questions that were on there, is is this like a deal breaker in 2020? Because it, it never seemed marriage? to be... Yeah, like it never seemed to be a deal breaker <laughs> before. I mean, if it is, man, that's something y'all got to deal with. I feel bad for y'all single people who want to get married because if that's a deal breaker. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the world. I mean, for real. For some people, when somebody doesn't want to get married, it's a deal breaker, or and, and vice versa. Eventually, I'm saying over time. Eventually, it doesn't have to be. You might. Some people could be together for six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. I have a personal close family member who. To this day, I, I think I call him uncle and I know they're not married. You know what I'm saying? And they've been together my whole entire life. You know what I'm saying? One of those people sleep in the same room, but different beds. Honestly, me personally, I'm all for marriage. Like, I'm, I love it. I love to see, you know, people that, you know, it, take a risk and, you know, bring their lives together for good. Like, you know what I mean? Like nobody ever, I don't think, it, I don't think I've known anybody and that's just me personally that has gotten into a marriage just because like. No, it, like, no, it, that shouldn't really ever be the, I know people who've got married early and then see the mistakes and it ignored them. Right. And they, they wonder why they was getting divorced after a certain amount Have you ever seen the show Married at First Sight? Oh yeah. I, I, I think I watched one episode and it was 